Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is video number two of my back-to-back -back, uh, music evaluations, reactions, and analysis. My name is Tu Yang. So if this is your first time joining us, uh, thank you for being here. And what I usually do is uh, we'll listen to a video together. Well, I'll evaluate it um, and we'll talk through a couple of ideas. These ideas will be my first time listening through as well, so we'll pick it up as we go. Um, for the most part, if you have not listened to this video, please go do so in the link below before you listen to this evaluation, and that way we can work through it together, and that way there's not really a break in your listening experience, because that's what I will be doing, is hopefully giving you a different perspective or a perspective that you perceive already unconsciously and I'm just bringing it to light or maybe we're thinking about the same things so without further ado let's go ahead and begin this is an evaluation of the bass gang's acapella cover of the song bones and I believe this is by Imagine Dragons so let's go ahead and get started Some time to think I'm in the bathroom looking at me Facing the mirror's all I need Waiting till the reaper takes my life Never gonna get me out alive I will live a thousand million lives My patience is waning Is this entertaining? My patience is waning Is this entertaining? Bye, I, I yeah, yeah, really, really, really cool stuff. And uh, Peter Barber with the F1 subharmonic. Very, very nice. Very stable as well. And for those of you that don't know that subharmonic, you can listen to it. And there's that. What it is, is when I listen to subharmonics, I typically feel the upper octave a little bit more, whether just by nature. And there is enough of a um without a, a better way to explain it i feel like there are some time differences between the pulse at least whenever i perform them <clears throat> excuse me uh, time differences between the pulse and so what i'm listening for is not the smoothness but the time differences so let's take it listen to the very beginning again So you hear that, right? That F1. Ooh. And you can hear those time different. You can hear sometimes it'll pop up the octave really close, really, really small. And, you know, the more you listen to it, the better. And the more you practice it, the better you get. And there's always going to be uh, that difference of time as opposed to where the folds are meeting in equal, in, in the equal amount of time from pulse to pulse this is a little bit more sporadic or uh, more sporadic than usual. So that's what I'm listening for. That build up at the very beginning is we have then Bobby singing the F2. If we can isolate this. At least I think that's where it's going. Yeah, so that's uh, A flat sliding to an A natural. Really cool. Give me, give me, give me some time to think. I'm in the bathroom looking at me. Facing the mirror is all I need. 
Wait until the reaper takes my life Never gonna get me out alive I will live a thousand million lives My patience is way Yeah, and so uh, they're singing into that second octave um, really easily and notice that uh, rhythm, right? If we isolate that rhythm, um, what I love about this is that uh, music in general is using these rhythms that are similar, if you want to call it, uh, the equivalent of it would be like an iso rhythm that they use in, in um, classical music or earlier music where the rhythms are pretty much the same from phrase to phrase to give you um, that relationship, right? Even though the, the intervals are slightly different, the rhythm is what you can relate to. And so that gives us um, a complete phrase, almost like a sentence in, the, in a sense. Then you have that high B flat that descends by half step. And sorts of, sort of out, outlines a, uh, a major four. We are definitely in B flat minor here. So we got this B flat minor. Then or a two. Or I mean a one or six. Let me see how to am, am I looking at this right? No, it's not a six. Let me actually just wait until I get it before I tell you what it is. <laughs> Yeah, so it's more of a four. Right, right. Let's listen to that from here. Takes my life, never gonna get me out alive. I will live a thousand yep, so there's that e flat. lives. So that's a four. My patience is waning, is this entertaining? My patience is waning, is this entertaining? But yeah, really cool. So we have this feel, this triplet, right? It goes So it goes so it's almost like we're filling in four and then all of a sudden we get this from Bobby and uh Tommy. Bum 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 almost like a slightly lazier triplet in music or a dotted uh, a dotted um you know, let's see. Dotted quarter Da, 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 bum, 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 bum. It's not it's not as square as that. There's like a little slightly lazier and it feels almost like a triplet and it gives us this rounder shape as opposed to um, angular, right? Bum, but bum, 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 bum. One and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then all of a sudden you feel it in two. Bum, 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 bum. And so you have this, this macro idea of rhythm uh, being placed in here and so it gives you it's almost like it's pulling you into a feel of two and this music I tend to feel it in two up until uh, up until uh, this next part here uh, for the most part the phrases are actually in two um, if you want to think about music as um, almost like prime numbers right um, the music it's either in two or it's in three otherwise if everything is in one, the beat is too heavy and it feels like it's just hitting um, on one the entire time. But when you feel music, if you feel it in between either two or three or sets of twos or sets of threes with once in a while, maybe a one if you're doing like something really complex. But for the most part, you can divide them down into that prime, um, those uh, prime factors, right? Two or three you can really feel the phrase of the music. And so I, I highly recommend that you, when you listen to music, see if you can feel it in between two and th twos and threes. And that'll give you a sense of the, the smaller interconnected par parts, as well as build the entire phrase for you. And as you listen here, you'll, you'll really feel that as well. By the way, uh, we are in the key of B flat minor, and that's been established uh, by the way the notes are moving and the chords that are being expressed. Uh, tempo, tempos are always interesting because um, uh, based on the video and the sync and everything, I mean, it's coming out to 113.92, at least uh, when I do it uh, in, in my in my DAW here. And I don't use, I actually, I don't depend on the automatic 
uh, tempo finder because it'll find different tempos and it'll try to adjust for you. So what I do is I listen to the very uh, the beginning, I let it play for a little bit, and then I establish a tempo where um, it can give you where it lands on the beat. And then I go toward the end and I make sure uh, that it still lands on that same beat, especially in popular music. And this could be a um, a conversion difference. You know, maybe they chose 112 or 114, and because of the frame rates video frame rates, et cetera, and then converting everything it might have gone down like a couple of frames, and that's why it's ending on the fraction. I'm not too familiar with this, so those of you that are in video or in uh, like very specific audio, you can tell me a little bit more about that. Um, either way, it's between 1, 112 and 114 in terms of tempo. Let's move on. I, I, I got this feeling, yeah, you know where I'm losing all control Cause there's magic in my bones I, I, I got this feeling in my soul Go ahead and throw your stones Cause there's magic in my bones yeah, There you have the uh, Another subharmonic there And that one is by Bobby this time Really great Um you have that melody in the lower voice, right? So there's not the 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 chorus or the pre-chorus, if you want to call it. It doesn't quite have um, that impact. Besides the beat coming in, right? And so um, whether this is an arrangement uh, thing or if this is something that's in the original, what I am noticing is that they're saving something for us, meaning that okay, okay, this is the, the here's the chorus, here's the part where it's the melody has a little bit more, a little bit more movement, so. Da, 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 da. I got this feeling, yeah, you know where I'm losing all control because there's magic in my bones. Yeah, so there, there's more of that melodic movement. It's not just uh, rhythmic ideas, but now there's something more melodic moving, right? And when we're talking about melody, if can you remember if if he just stayed on a couple of notes, I, 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 da, 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 whatever the words are, um. He's not outlining a bass. There's some scalar movements, right? From note to note, there's some um, intervals that are involved and they move in opposite directions. And a really good melody or a singable melody has those concepts. So once again, that m idea of melody is a little bit more, usually more present in the choruses of popular songs than they are in verses. And the reasoning for that sometimes, not always, is to get the listener to kind of Cling on to the chorus, right? If you listen to all great choruses, it, they are usually usually more singable <laughs> than they are the actual verses, and that's definitely by design. I, I, I got this feeling in my soul. Go ahead and throw your stones, cause there's magic in my bones. Yeah, and it's very, uh, it's there aren't any harmonies, right? You have that, you have that. Wow. Wow, in the background, which is I, I believe is an actual sample of some sort or audio. That's not so. This is not a cappella. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I was listening to it, and I'm listening to that drum, and that I believe that's also an electronic drum set. So it's a really nice uh, snare. I think uh, for those of you that are beatboxers, it's more of like a D T, like a uh, in that case, not really a B sound. It's like a T of some sort. I'll have to kind of experiment with it a little bit, but really, 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 really great um, use of snare uh, there. I mean, in terms of the, the actual sample, not a cappella. Um, and notice the vocal line is just... Very, very light. So they are reserving quite a bit, uh, withholding, uh, intentionally withholding a lot of uh, vocal information to get us to focus on the melody and to get us to to prepare us for something else and when you're dealing with music that's already louder you have to have the arrangement um you have to strip away things from from the arrangement so that you don't give everything away so much at first so really really cool guys there it is right a little fuller Feeling like a polar hurtling Seeing all the vultures circling Burning in the flames I'm working in Turning in the bed it's darkening My patience is waning Is this entertaining? My patience is waning Is this entertaining?
Oh, I love that ascending line. So let's listen. Let's isolate that. <laughs> love the the choices of color as well and uh, filters, guys. Let me actually go back. So we have that moving. We have... And then tripling the octave, right? So tripling the octave, and then we have a, uh, a holding down the fourth is what I usually would call it. Is when you hold that fifth, and then you have the melody or the the soprano voice. <clears throat> Listen to the tension that it creates simply by moving in. Uh, by chromaticism, right? Moving by half steps, uh, ascending. Waiting is this entertaining? My patience is waiting. Is this entertaining? So you got. Then, when you listen to uh, to the soprano going to that A natural. Listen to what the voices are doing. They have that sort of that blues uh, seventh crunch, right? And uh, and when you have that jazz, uh, if you want to call it that sharp, that uh, F seven sharp nine. Usually the voicing is a little different, but in this case, it just touches it enough to where it gives us a, a lot of crunch, even more so there. And intentional uh, with the arrangement or even the original, yes, definitely. So. Waiting is this entertaining? I, I, I got this feeling, yeah, you know, where I'm losing all control. In my bones. Yeah, so we got that amazing, amazing walking down. Magic in my bones. Boom. Wow. Very, very clear. Uh, excuse me, as I'm still recovering, but we have that walking fifth, right? Magic in my bones. Uh, that low B flat. Boom. Very, very clear from Bobby there. And it's isolated, right? So it's you have to center in on that, and it just breaks everything. Everything else falls apart, and you must now orally with your ears depend on that movement down. And the descent sound feels like it's even further than usual because you have everything that's going up here in the high voice, high voices, or in the upper voices, and then all of a sudden you have this bass that kicks in, right? Magic in my bow. Pages of my life, walking the past so many, paced a million times. Drowning the voices in the air, leaving the ones that never care, taking the pieces up and building to the sky. And notice these verses, right? They they are definitely more rhythmically challenging than they are melodically challenged. And once again, that's that's the idea, right? Those iso rhythms, um, whether it's the flow of the lyrics or the intention of the artist to put more words and more of like a, if you want to call that like a speech-like um, motion, uh, more speech-like in this case, it makes it even more, uh, you can call it, it brings it together uh, in with more cohesion in terms of text expression than it is um, melodic expression. So the, the notes uh, are simple, but the rhythms are more complicated. My patience is waning, is this entertaining? My patience is waning, is this entertaining? I, I, I got this feeling, yeah. Oh yeah, so we got some uh, some amazing belting there. Uh, and what what I love is that they, they have just enough mix on their edge that they're not shouting. I mean, you can tell because there's like a lot of strength behind it, but also a lot of control. Uh, if it was a full belt, it would just be loud and um, wide. But in this case, for both of them, they're up here. Oh, 
all the way up to that E flat five. And then listen to that again, right there. Waning. I love that run, so let's listen to that run and see if we can isolate that right there. So starting on that D flat. So uh, an octave and a third. I believe that's what I'm hearing. Let's listen to it one more time. and very clear too with a uh, speed but then also accuracy nicely uh, nicely done uh told me yep yeah definitely hearing some e flat ones yeah um when you are that low there is a slight uh, difference depending on where you are in the range and how you've warmed up and so for me F always feels easier E flat feels like it's a slightly different territory in this case and sometimes I have to physically warm down to get there right and it'll take me a while or, or I, it could be it could be any time of the day and it doesn't really matter uh, sometimes for me uh, in terms of performance I tend to stay at F G and A and B, B flat. E flat, I've never had to use, but I do have that available uh, from time to time. It's just, it's in a different place, and so I have to make sure I prepare accordingly. But really, really well done, guys. Let's keep going here. Well, there you have it and you have everyone on the B flat and I believe it's a mix of everything uh, just a really cool trick uh, for those of you that are that are working on sound and design layering is a huge huge thing and it's been done um, with any style of music that you can think of if you think of an orchestra right you don't just have a contrabass uh, one instrument but you have a contrabass you have a tuba you have a bass trombone you have uh, lower French horns, you have lower trumpets, you have lower winds, whether it's contrabassoon, bassoon, whether it's uh, contrabass clarinet, bass clarinet, and you know, even bass flute. And the idea is not necessarily pitch, but overall timbre, right? You, you're not, you're no longer creating just one instrument and hopefully and hoping that it's loud enough to where it'll cut through. But when you start to layer things, you'd um choralize if that's if i if i can make that a word you make you turn things into into a a soundscape uh where you can design your own sounds and that's typically what choirs do is changing moving timbres around it's not necessarily about range and actual voice type anymore it's more about the soundscape what is the the intention that i'm trying to achieve and what is the color that I want, because uh, these four guys can can definitely do this all in chest. But what is the reasoning behind those different nuances? The subharmonics, the growl, the chest fry, the actual voice. Is it intentional? I can't say. Uh, is it just hey, we want to do this because we can? That's up to the artist to decide. But listen to all the nuances, and that combination of sound gives birth to a new timbre that is not achievable by one person and this is the this is the beauty of a choral uh type situation or an ensemble type situation where you can craft different sounds uh, those of you that play in my play minecraft or mmo rpgs or any type of uh situations mixing colors um 
situations where you have to um, interact. This is these ideas are all present in music. So listen to that final chord. I'll pull it back a little bit so we have a build up to it. Yeah, and so we have all of that boom, mm, all the way down to that B flat. And whether it's a growl, again, growl, subharmonics, full voice, chest fry, those colors really blend together and they create a new sound. So, gentlemen, it's been an honor to, uh, to listen to your music and to see the evolution of your, not only your voices, but also your collaborative efforts. You know, they, uh, from video one all the way until now, it's, it's been an improvement and rightly so, because the more you work together, the more you fine tune each other and the more you uh, collaborate, uh, ideas start to flow. And that's, that's the beauty of this. Uh, such a wonderful uh, treat to hear you as always. Once again, just to establish, uh, we are in that B flat zone for the most part. Tempo 113, 114, in this case 113.92. <laughs> and so uh, thank you again so much. If you have not checked out their page, please do so. There is some amazing music on there. Lots and lots of music. Feel free to browse my, my stuff as well. Um, I'm trying to speed this through and get everything organized in such a way that you will hear more videos and see more reviews. And I know sometimes these reviews can be a little um, uh, taxing and overbearing. Uh, it all depends because it's it, it's a part of the listening experience. And uh, I just like to share with you what, when I listen to music, it's not just about the enjoyment. I'm like, wow, you know, these chords are in tune or this is the flow of the melody is doing this because it informs me in my listening experience and it allows me to elevate my appreciation for the artist, right? So I'm no longer just listening for myself, but I'm listening um, empathetically for the artists as well and their intentions uh, to the audience. And I try to combine all of those and say, hey, wait, you know, these ideas, they work because of this or these ideas, they flow because of this or maybe it's because of this. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all next time. Stay tuned for video three, back-to-back. -back. Tune in tomorrow, and I will see you then. Have a good one.